So in case you don't know, the RX 7700 XT and 7800 XT will be released tomorrow by the 6th of September. And although we've already had some performance numbers in the AMD's presentation where they actually uh, showed a bit of FSR 3, what FSR 3 would be, the RX 7700 XT and 7800 XT, they showed the cards and they showed a bit of the performance. But it seems that we now have some performance leaks before the actual release of the card. To kind of complement the numbers that AMD actually gave us, we do have the internal AMD numbers and no, I'm not a leak because I did not get these, sadly. But as stated by video cards, somebody actually leaked the performance or the internal AMD numbers and as always, take these with a grain of salt because they are what they are, they're AMD numbers, but in terms of GPU performance besides the 7900 series that, well, uh, that didn't perform as they should because of of a supposed bug, but doesn't really matter. Besides that, all the recent AMD numbers have been more or less on par with what they say. For example, the 7600 numbers uh, are actually higher on my end. Um, the numbers from Ryzen CPUs are actually pretty on par with what with what third party third party benchmarkers have. So they're more like on par besides the 7900 series. So you can take them with a grain of salt, but they will most likely be more or less what they show here. So let's go to the leaked numbers. And another leak, by the way, is for today's sponsor. That is leaking promotions. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. And by the way, these results were also shared by uh, Agade Tecnologia, which I believe it's maybe maybe Portuguese or Brazilian or something like that because it, it reads HD Tecnologia which means basically HD Technology and they recently shared AMD's official data regarding the upcoming RX 7800 XT and 7700 XT graphics cards set to launch on September 6th. While some of the information may have been previously disclosed during AMD's unveiling event, event, like I told before, this new leak provides a more extensive list of game titles and includes synthetic benchmarks as well, which were notably absent from the initial presentation. As for the actual numbers, let's start for example with the 7700 XT versus the RTX 4060. Firstly, we have ray tracing benchmarks only and then we're going into the rasterization ones. So as for the 7700 XT, we firstly have the Callisto protocol using the X12 Ultra settings with uh, ray tracing set to high. And in this scenario, the 7700 XT, even with inferior ray tracing, is matching the RTX 4060 Ti for roughly the same price, being on average 0% faster, of course, because it's matching. As for the Cyberpunk 2077 Overdrive benchmark, well, the 7700 XT can't barely achieve 5 FPS, which is insane. The 4060 Ti, well, doesn't achieve a playable experience, but it does achieve 14 FPS, which in this case makes the 7700 XT 64% slower, which is quite a lot, actually. As for the normal ray tracing performance in Cyberpunk, well, it isn't that bad for the 7700 XT that achieves 23 average FPS with Ray Tracing Ultra, while the 4060 Ti achieves 28, making it 28% slower than the 4060 Ti in terms of Ray Tracing. But once again, I can tell you that the 7700 XT um, is actually the same price. Well, as soon as AMD announced the 7700 XT, the 4060 Ti 16 GB started decreasing its price because, well, Nvidia decreased its price because, well, of course, the 7700 XT would stomp over the, um, the 4060 Ti in anything but ray tracing. And even in this scenario, we're talking about Cyberpunk, and it has been said that Cyberpunk uses the CUDA cores on the Nvidia cards to actually enhance the ray tracing performance. Maybe that's why the, the Nvidia cards are so much better in, in terms of ray tracing in this game, in, the, in, the, in terms of ray tracing performance, sorry, in this game compared to other games where AMD cards actually match 
or at least get really close in terms of ray tracing performance. As we decrease the ray tracing settings to medium, the RX 7700 XT reaches the 32 average FPS mark, while the 4060 Ti goes to 35, meaning that it is only now 7% slower than the 4060 Ti, and if we go to the ray tracing settings to low, we go with the 7700 XT with 63 average FPS, finally being 13% faster than the RTX 4060 Ti. As for that space, the ray tracing implementation is also pretty low, we only have ray tracing ambient occlusion, meaning that the ray tracing isn't that heavy in that game, and that makes the RX 7700 XT have 59 average FPS, while the RTX 4060 Ti only has 50, making the 7700 XT 19% faster, which is actually pretty nice. In F1 2023, well, we have 90 FPS on the 7700 XT and 95 FPS on the 4060 Ti, but once again with ray tracing settings to medium. With Forza Horizon 5 we have ray tracing to maximum, but once again, and I repeat once again, the ray tracing settings on this game are only for the car views or something like that, so the ray tracing does not apply to real gameplay, and in this case scenario, they're basically matched with only one FPS difference, which might be margin of error. And in Resident Evil 4, of course, the RX 7700 XT pushes 84 average FPS, while the 4060 Ti pushes only 69, and we're even talking we're even talking about ray tracing settings set to high, in this case reflections, and even there the 7700 XT is faster than the 4060 Ti, because once again the 4060 Ti only has 8GB and the 8GB cards actually perform pretty awful in this game when using ray tracing settings, because in some in some scenarios they will actually, the, the game will randomly quit because you don't have enough bandwidth or enough uh, or enough VRAM, but I assume that the 4060 Ti here is the 4060 Ti 16 gigabytes because otherwise the game would just, like I told you, randomly close. But as soon as we go to the rasterization benchmarks, we can see the 7700 XT showing its true potential. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla running ultra high settings, we have the 7700 XT with 105, while the RTX 4060 Ti only reaches 92, making the 7700 XT 15% faster. On Borderlands 3, the 7700 XT is actually 31% faster, pushing 105 FPS versus the 80 FPS on the 4060 Ti. Go to Boundary, I don't really know this game, but the, the 7700 XT is 9% faster, pushing 117 versus 107 FPS on the, 40, on the 4060 Ti, and in this case, well, it's 10 FPS, the difference is not that big or that noticeable. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the difference is quite noticeable, as the 7700 XT is 31% faster than the 4060 Ti, pushing 106 FPS versus 81 FPS, and in real gameplay scenarios this actually makes the difference. Going from 81 to 106 FPS in, in real gameplay, if you have a high refresh rate monitor, well, it does make a difference because it is over 20 FPS, so 20 Hz above what you get with a 4060 Ti definitely makes a difference. And with Callisto Protocol, but now without ray tracing, we actually have the 7700 XT being once again 16% faster than the 4060 Ti, going to 77 FPS versus the 66 FPS on the 4060 Ti. As for Dead Island 2, which is an amazing game by the way, this is the, actually the only title shown here where the 4060 Ti is still faster than the 7700X, even without ray tracing, 7700 XT sorry, even without ray tracing being 3 percent faster than the 7700 XT. But as we go for example to that space once again without ray tracing this time, the, the advantage that the 7700 XT had before is even bigger now, being 24 percent faster pushing 69 average FPS while the 4060 Ti only pushes 55. And it is more or less the same for all the other games, with Hogwarts Legacy actually being 20% faster on the 7700 XT, The Last of Us 21%, Resident Evil 23%, and Star Wars Jedi Survivor being 14% faster. Once again, um, with up to 31% difference with Modern Warfare 2 and Borderlands 3. 
And this is actually a pretty big difference because in terms of rasterization, most games, um, most games run rasterization nowadays, okay? And the rasterization still looks pretty good. Ray tracing in some scenarios looks much better, but not in all scenarios. In some of them you can't even tell the difference. So rasterization is still the king for now and the 7700 XT runs rasterization much better. And at the same time, even in some ray tracing scenarios, it can run better than the 4060 Ti for, for roughly the same price. So it's a no-brainer if these results come to be true, okay? I will buy the 7700 XT to test uh, and most likely possibly the 7800 XT. AMD said they would send one, but once again... Uh, they always take a lot of time to send cards, and that's not good. I, I, I think that I that I deserved uh, to have some cards uh, sent before they release, but well, that's a topic for another video, I guess. As for the 7800 XT versus the 4070, well, the results aren't that bad, actually. In the Callisto protocol, once again using ray tracing high settings, we have the 7800 XT being 9% slower than the 4070, and the 4070 is actually much better than the 4060 Ti. Uh, and still, it is only 9% slower, the 7800 XT, than the 4070 when using ray tracing. In terms of Cyberpunk when using Ray Tracing Overdrive, once again, the 7800 XT barely reaches 6 FPS, being only 1 FPS faster than the 7700 XT, while the 4070 actual, actually delivers 18 FPS. So the 7800 XT is 69% slower, but well, that's quite normal because once again, RT Overdrive was made by NVIDIA and for NVIDIA, so the path tracing. But interestingly enough, as we go to Cyberpunk 2077, but with the ray tracing setting set to Ultra, well, the 7800 XT is only 19% slower than the RTX 4070, while the 7700 XT was, for example, 28% slower than the 4060 Ti, the 7800 XT is only 19% slower, delivering 27 average FPS, while the 4070 delivers 37. Although in terms of real gameplay, the well, the difference is quite big because we have 10 FPS more, uh, and that's that's actually a lot in low FPS numbers. And as we go to ray tracing low settings, once again, the 7800 XT actually beats the 4070, going with 76 average FPS versus the 73 average FPS on the 4070, which is not that bad at all. And as we go to, for example, that space once again, the 7800 XT is faster, but not by much, actually, not by much. And then in Forza Horizon and Resident Evil 4, it is once again faster. As we go into the rasterization benchmarks, well, the 7800 XT is 8% faster in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 21% faster in Borderlands 3, it is also 6% slower in Boundary, and 23% faster in Modern Warfare 2 because this game actually runs much better on the AMD GPUs, matches the Callisto Protocol performance of the 4070, but it is once again 23% faster in Cyberpunk 2077 when not using any kind of ray tracing. So when using rasterization only, it is 23% faster, which is also pretty nice. 4% slower with that Island 2, once again, and I assumed it would be actually faster in that space, since the 7700 XT is 24% faster than the 4060 Ti, 2% faster in Forspoken, and so on, so on, so on, being actually the biggest difference after that in Hogwarts Legacy, where it is 15% faster than the 4070, and then in Resident Evil 4, where it is 12% faster. And that's basically it, so the 7800 XT is not much faster than the 4070, basically being on par but having 16GB VRAM instead of having 12GB VRAM only, while the 7700 XT seems to be considerably faster in almost all scenarios apart from, from ray tracing, even in some scenarios with ray tracing it is considerably faster than the 4060 Ti. Once again, it seems like the, for, the 7800 XT might be power constricted and actually AIB models might actually perform much better than the numbers that you see here. And even if you raise the power limits on the 7800 XT, it would definitely perform much better as we saw, for example, on the 7900 XT, that as you raise the power limits, it performs much better than at stock settings. 
I guess we need to wait and see for tomorrow for third party, well, for third party results. I will also bring you my results as soon as I can, because once again, I do have to buy the cards and test and then make the video. It takes time because AMD nor any other brand actually sent the GPUs before release. It is what it is, I guess I'm, I'm still a small channel. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. And well, see you in the next one. Also, leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about these cards' performance and if they will perform better or worse than what you see here from the AMD's numbers. Yeah, now I can go. Cheers, guys. See you in the next one.